But guys, watch NVIDIA tomorrow above the 50 day, okay? The only stock, the only stock that is better than NVIDIA uh, when it starts breaking loose is Tesla. Well, NVIDIA is on deck. So if the market is good tomorrow, guys, watch NVIDIA. If it reclaims back the 50 day moving average, guys, look how much room we have for the upside. So welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, thank you very much for spending a couple of minutes uh, of your evening. Uh, like, subscribe, share, uh, all that good stuff, right? Support the channel so we can give you continue to provide uh, nightly updates and an unbiased opinion of what we believe, or I believe, uh, the market is going to do tomorrow. Not next year, not next month, but uh, tomorrow. Again, it's all about uh, gathering data and basing your thesis on what the market is t trying to tell you. So what is the market trying to tell us? Okay, so if you've been following along uh, since September, you know that we went through a pretty aggressive uh, over under uh, bull in control, bear in control, vice versa, about five times. And then finally, the bears just took over. They took over, they confirmed the 50 day moving average and got down to the 100 day EMA. And then the seller that we saw to the 50 day moving average, up, down, up, down, the bears finally took control. That's exactly what's happening right now on the 150 day moving average as well. Excuse me, the 100 day moving average as well. As you can see here, uh, they bro broke the 100, reclaimed it, got rejected, fell below, got above, and now it's kind of just waiting to see what happens next. What happens next is more data. As, mu as much as uh, we turn around and say, well, you know, what's going to get this market going on a natural uh, trajectory, either going up or down? It's always data, right? It's always data. It's always some sort of news. Again, uh, like we talked about on Tuesday's video, we have an election coming up uh, in 2024. So you're never going to have uh, a stalemate cycle of news. It's just because something's going to be uh, always on there. And somebody in the webinar today asked, well, when do, do, when do I think this volatility is going to go away? The question is, when is it not going to go away? This is part of trading, guys. This is what we are. There is no such thing as a dead zone in the market. Something's always going on, right? You know, think about it. 2020, we were all mining our own business. Then a freaking pandemic broke out, right? Again, raise your hand if you ever thought a pandemic was going to break out in your lifetime. That's the point. So there's always something going on in the market. Uh, again, uh, I'm going on year 25. Was it different going on year five? Absolutely, right? Uh, the only thing is going on year five, I didn't realize two years later, there's going to be uh, the Armageddon of the financial Holocaust, right? Nobody tells you what's going to happen next. So there's something always going on. But the point is, guys, you trade where the market is going to give you the biggest value. Your game plan should be always with the wind behind your back. It's the idea of turning around and going on any random day, I think the market's going higher. Well, no, I think the market's going lower. I think I could fly. I think I could dunk the ball backwards. I think, I think, I think. This is all irrelevant. These are all opinions. Everybody has an opinion. Nobody cares about your opinion. Nobody cares about my opinion, right? It's all about price action, what's going to happen next. And now... What we're seeing here is another congestion, right? Another congestion area, just to say we saw on this congestion area fight over the 50. Now they're fighting over the 100-day moving average. We talked in nauseam of what the bulls need to do to reclaim at least a tradable potential, tradable rally for a couple of days. That's this 363 level on the keys, as we've seen here, has got rejected here back-to-back -back days on the 29th and the 30th. And now we are kind of just nestled here. We have a really big breakdown uh, a couple of days ago on the 357 level went down uh, to 353. So 353 now, right? 353 uh, is going to be an intermediate area of support. You can see here it held here twice on the queues. Obviously, the big number here is going to be this 351 level, uh, which is the low for, from September. The upside, obviously, is the 363. And the reason why we keep on reiterating the point is a lot of traders just are simply trading, buying buying and selling stocks randomly and not understanding the ramification of what happens when macro channels don't confirm. 
If a macro channel doesn't confirm upwards or downwards, yeah, you're going to be filled with something called the chop, right? No matter how long you've been trading this business, something known as chop is always going to be available there. And the reason why chop occurs is because you get stagnant channels, right? Here's a stagnant channel that they're trying to fight through the chop of the channel, keeps on getting, you know, keeps on getting rejected. And now we're just trying to hold on to the bottom channel. Is tomorrow's jobs number going to be a catalyst to get this market going one way or another? Absolutely. Right? Maybe. Perhaps. Who the hell knows? Again, we're prepared for it. And this is why we always talk about every single day, have a thesis, have an opinion, don't anticipate, don't try to be a hero, wait for that opinion and wait for that thesis to confirm. So we, if we know 363 is going to be a big level to the upside and we know 353 is going to be a big level to the downside, well, why are you trying to make an, a, a macro trade? Why are you trying to squeeze water out of a rock on a macro case? Can you do it case by case, trade by trade? Absolutely. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. But the key is if you're looking where the emotional carnage is, it's still the downside. It's the long investors right now. You can't possibly turn around if you're an investor outside of names, perhaps of like NVIDIA and Tesla. We'll get to that in a second. But if you look at the majority of names, Dirk, every the majority of stocks are getting hammered. We continue to talk about consumer cyclical names, anything to do with retail, not spending money. Look what happened to Coke and Pepsi today, right? Remember little Johnny a couple of days ago when Kellogg, when, when Kellogg got, got smashed, right? Kellogg got smashed again today, right? Mommy couldn't buy little Johnny, uh, you know, a cereal. Well, mommy and daddy couldn't afford now to buy, my, you know, little Johnny a Diet Coke for breakfast, right? They ran out of cigarettes. They can't buy Diet Coke for breakfast. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. And this continues to be the problem. So when you see an upward day, that's all it is. It's an upward day. You're going to see 85, 90% of the days are going to be to the sell side day until the market starts reclaiming back the 50 day moving average. Again, is tomorrow going to be a day that the market loves, embraces the jobs number and we have a big rally day? Of course, everything's on the table. If the market is open, of course, there's always a chance the market goes one way or another, right? I mean, any anybody trading for 10 seconds can tell you that. But the point is, we need to have the bigger contingency plan and we need to wait to either 363, uh, 363 to get confirmed to the way up, to get a couple of days of breathing room. Uh, and obviously tomorrow, if we start losing, you know, if we start losing this 353, and honestly, I don't even think we need to wait to 353. You see the last couple of days worth of lows, right? Q stopped at 355 back to back days. You see that, guys? Forget about the 353 for that. You see these two channels? This is kind of what we talk about a sneaky pivot, right? 355 has been defended twice back to back days. Forget about 353. If the Qs start losing 355 tomorrow, then we'll get to 353. If they start losing 353, then we're going down to 351. And if that all happens, hell breaks loose and Lucifer comes in on, on Earth and starts smiling at everybody, then we got a move, measure move to the 150-day moving average of roughly 47 and change. Again, that is the reality on the upside. Uh, again, Bull's going to need to do a lot of work. Ironically, right? Ironically, not everything is bad, right? Not everything is bad at all. There's a couple of tech names that have been actually doing very, very well and, you know, are setting up here. You know, yesterday, Tesla had a really good move, right? It's very, very few stocks uh, especially in the tech space that are above supply. And you can see here, Tesla yesterday, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Tesla got above the 50-day moving average. And today, put in an inside day, yesterday was up 14 bucks. Today, arrested it. If the market's going to be good tomorrow, yeah, obviously, this is a name you want to focus on. Uh, look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA has held up incredibly well. And this is the closest thing to Tesla right now. You see how close this thing is to reclaiming the 50-day moving average? If the market is good tomorrow and they embrace the jobs number, guys, watch NVIDIA tomorrow above the 50-day, okay? The only stock the only stock that is better than NVIDIA uh, when it starts breaking loose is Tesla. Well, NVIDIA is on deck. So if the market is good tomorrow, guys, watch NVIDIA. If it reclaims back the 50-day moving average, guys, look how much room you have to the upside. So very, very important levels here on NVIDIA. Uh, I'll, I'll also like Tesla tomorrow on a continuation if the jobs number is good. Again, if the jobs number is bad, everything we say to the long side means, means absolutely nothing. But again, there's a contingency plan if the number is not good, right? And that's the whole point. You have to be ready on both sides of the market. Like look at Amazon, for example, right? Look at Amazon. Look at Amazon has held, uh, has held the 150-day EMA now, uh, two out of the last three days while putting in lower highs 
on the 10 day moving average, right? If the number is bad going into tomorrow and the market decides to sell, watch Amazon. Starts losing this 150 day, this thing's gonna go down to September lows. Rivian today, right? Rivian this morning decided to uh, come out with a hundred, $1.5 billion uh, offering. It also cut guidance, yada, yada, yada. Here we are, right? If the number is bad tomorrow, watch Rivian for a second day downside move. This thing looks absolutely awful, right? So it's important, really, really important to have, again, a contingency plan for both sides of the market. It's going to be a market moving number one way or another. And the last thing you want to do is sit there at 831 and go, well, what do you do? What do I do? Yeah, yes, that's the whole point. You're supposed to be prepared uh, before that happens. Um, you know, I'm still managing a whole bunch of swings uh, we've been talking about for a while. Uh, car gurus, um, you know, car gurus, I mean, this thing, it feels like forever. It's been a month. Uh, I'm up about, you know, 50 cents on the trade. Um, you know, it's taken a long time. Goodyear Tire, remember Goodyear Tire we've been talking about nonstop? It finally broke down. You know, my average cost is about 12.15. This, uh, this is the lowest close in the whole formation here. I'm down to about 25%. I would like to cover a little more in the 1130s and the rest below 11. We'll see what happens there. Um, what else do I have? Uh, MGNI, it just, it just, for some reason, it just can't crack. I'm down about a nickel on this thing. It just can't crack. I'm in this thing for three weeks. Um, what else am I in? What else am I in? Um, what else am I in? There's something else I covered. Um, I covered Dunkin' Donuts. It just, it just, um, it just wasn't cracking. I, I covered the stock. Wound up losing about twenty-five cents on the trade. Again, it's not the end of the world. It's just one of those things. That just wouldn't crack, wouldn't crack, wouldn't crack. But overall, again, you know, if, if you sit long enough, uh, if you sit long enough in these positions and they can't reclaim the range, eventually they will uh, start to crack. So we'll see. You know, we'll see. We got some things that are working, some things that are uh, sitting there. Some one, one thing that didn't work. But the point is. Uh, good things will happen as long as the wind continues to be uh, in your back, more or less. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. So yesterday, uh, again, guys, there was no video yesterday. We talked about this on Tuesday. Instead, if you guys are wondering, today's Thursday, usually my day off. Uh, well, today I'm making the video. So yesterday, we had a great breakout. Uh, 255 needs to build on Tesla. Uh, traded up to uh, 63, uh, 63 and change, right? Big, beautiful breakout. Again, that's the whole point of you see how it, you see how it took out the 50-day moving average here at 255, right? That's the whole point why I'm saying watch the video for tomorrow. Um, so it had a really really big move here today. Uh, just had another another initial move to 63.60s. Nice move, you know, nice move there. I still like it higher, if this, especially if the market doesn't die. Uh, so yeah, anyway, anyway, yesterday fantastic move. Yesterday down a little bit pre-market on the Rivian's guidance should shake it off. 62.30 needs to build again. Popped up really really nicely. I still think if the market gets good. It could still see 267, 268, but we'll see. We'll see here. Uh, Meta never got to uh, 307. Uh, NVIDIA, nice pop here on NVIDIA. NVIDIA reclaimed the five-day, 441.43 needs to build. I took the initial scalp uh, on NVIDIA. It went from 41 and changed to 44, came back in, traded all the way back to 48. This thing, I mean, talk about a relative strike. Guys, I'm telling you, this is, looks a carbon copy of Tesla. The jobs number is good tomorrow. Watch the 50-day on the video. This thing confirms, man, there's a lot of room up. So hopefully uh, we can get some good things there. Uh, Q's rejected 361, needs to reclaim, never got close to there. And then you started seeing, and then you started seeing some really good downside pivots. Uh, AMD obviously never got up there. Rivian, again, we talked about it with a cut guidance, 21, 25, pre-market lows. If it confirms, it could get hit. Yeah, that's an understatement. Rivian uh, took out 21, 25. Look at it from the five minute view. Right, took out 21.25 and went all the way down to 18. Uh, this thing starts losing 18. It's going to go down lower. Uh, look at uh, Airbnb. Congratulations, to all you guys that took Airbnb. 126.50. If it builds below, can flush. Right here is Airbnb. Okay, so here's the five minute view on Airbnb. It took out 26.50 and look at the move all the way down uh, to 21.60s. Really, really big move on Airbnb. It's a good job again for all you guys that took that as well. Netflix. Netflix got hit as well. Right away, guys, once you see the option flow come in and it starts losing a big range, selling is going to follow. So 371, if it builds below, can flush. Weekly 265 buyers came in and here was Netflix, right? Here was Netflix. Uh, look at the view here. So it took out the 371 
and traded all the way down to uh, 67 uh, before it bounced. So that's it. That's it. Uh, guys, again, look, uh, I know a lot of you guys are brand new to trading. I always encourage everybody to try everything. Okay, Not everything is for everybody. Somebody could be comfortable with options, with futures, with equity, with Forex, small caps, mid caps. I am comfortable with technical analysis. Okay, um, If you are curious about pivots, all it needs to do to do is watch them for 30 days. Come aboard, uh, come aboard the webinar, watch it for 30 days. You'll make a quick feasibility study if it's the right thing for you. I, I, I really believe that most traders trade exactly the same way and most traders are probably gonna get exactly the same results. If you are serious about your business, about your trading, about your prospects in the future, I don't care what style of trading you take, okay? But stick with it. Stick with it for a year. Stick with it for two years. Stop bouncing around one, you know, one day you're a day trader, the next day you're a swing trader, the next day you're trading futures, the next day you're trading options. God damn it, just stick to one thing, right? Master that one thing. You might not be the greatest in the world, but that's okay. As long as you're not the worst, that's the most important part. Guys, God bless everybody. Stay patient, stay humble, stay happy, stay healthy. God's help everybody. Have a great day tomorrow, and I'll see you guys uh, on the weekend update. Take care.